magnificent. We sit here in this wonderful, magnificent building and listen to that magnificent instrument music. It's hard to not get inspired by that. We too will someday leave a legacy. We'll leave a rock in that river. And so, I think we'll share a time of remembrance and conviction this afternoon. Memories of those who have finished well, and a conviction that we will all strive to finish well. Sidney Carlton Evans. Absent, sir. Earl David Amon. Absent, sir. Victor Joe Apodaca, Jr. Absent, sir. Victor Henry Bouquet, Jr. Absent, sir. Don Walter Box. Absent, sir. Robert George Bull II. Absent, sir. Harold Norman Campbell. Absent, sir. John Cairns Weaver, Jr. Carl James Whitaker. Absent, sir. Robert Peter White. Absent, sir. John Joseph Walcott. Absent, sir. Roger Clark Woodbury. Absent, sir. Edward Anthony Zumpa. Absent, sir. And I'm sure you all heard all the angel wings beating while we were reading. the shiny blue boxes that sit on the stage at Falcon Stadium every year and inside is the United States Air Force Academy We had a funeral for Bill Gibbons, but it should have been a celebration. After 50 years, let us celebrate Bill's short life as he would have wanted it. The next time you have a beer, hoist it to him. So, Bill, rest in peace, my dear roommate, comrade, and our classmate. numerous and valuable contributions to the international wine industry, the Air Force, the Academy and our class, and the graduate community at large clearly make him the first choice for our 50-year outstanding graduate award.
to do with the major coordinates of my life. They were primarily determined by what the unsolicited uh, actions by others on my behalf were, what the blessings of our Creator were, and pure accidents of timing. But to say that I was devastated to resign from the Air Force probably strains the credulity of many of you, considering that I reported to my first duty assignment for pilot training with a referral ER. <laughs> lowest of the lowest you can get, ladies. My first duty station was C-124s. <laughs> 8,000 feet, 200 knots on a good day. <laughs> and after I shook off all that, came back from the Republic of Vietnam with choice of assignments, going to F-104s in George, going through Luke to check out 100s. Air Force phased out to 104, and and God said, what do you want to do? And I said, I want 105s back to SCU. But I wouldn't have done that if that major winter halter up at personnel just had given me that 105. <laughs> I'd have been in for 20, 30 years. You know what he told me? When I finally found the guy, he says, well, you just had too much of what you want, and that's not the way the Air Force works. You can have any airplane you want anywhere in the world, but we're not going to give you that. I promise that's what he said. What if Big George had never said that to me, Burgundy is the name of the place? Or what if that C-47 commander had never turned to me one day and said, you want to be flying A-1As? Would have gone back to Suffolk County in 101s. Would in my 20, 30 years and selling life insurance in Southern California. All of these things are responsible for the data points in my life. Blessings, deliberate actions taken by others, and accidents of timing. For those of you who observed have observed some generosity in my part. I want to just tell you that I feel like I owe it. I owe so many people so many things. Those days of cresting the Chardonnay wave, busting up Homerville, burning down the Oak Club, busting up Homerville and the Apple Valley, those days are gone forever. But at least we had them. Come go with me, darling, come and go 